Greetings, Dr. Mark Winton here from the University of Central Florida Department of Criminal Justice. And in this video, I would like to address whether or not we're seeing a fifth global wave of terrorism, specifically right-wing terror. This is based on the article by V.A. Auger, Auger, that's A-U-G-E-R, right-wing terror, a fifth global wave from Perspectives on Terrorism, volume 14, number three, pages 87 to 97. I believe Perspectives on Terrorism is uh, freely available to the public from their website, and I would mention this is an um, excellent and informative journal. The author starts out by looking at um, multiple cases that have occurred recently. For example, the attack in New Zealand in March 2019 and the El Paso attack in August 2019 show a broader trend of right-wing terrorism and specifically white supremacist nationalist terrorism. Between 2014 and 2018, we have seen a 320% increase in um, right-wing uh, terrorist attacks. And um, recently, uh, we've seen that right-wing terrorism has been responsible for more terrorist-related deaths in the United States. And the FBI has consider, it considers um, right-wing terrorists to be a major threat. And the author asks, could this be a new wave of terrorism or the fifth wave? Rappaport's wave theory of terrorism is very relevant for this analysis. And Rappaport focused on terrorism since the late 19th century. And as I mentioned, we focused on his wave theory in previous uh, readings and, and videos. But the basic ideas here would be, for example, that terrorism has a cyclical uh, character and that waves involve international terrorism that expand and contract over time and each wave is based on a major ideology, a major belief system and practices. Uh, Rappaport identified four waves of modern terrorism that last around 40 years each. The anarchist was from around 1870s to World War I, focusing more on democratic and egalitarian practices. The anti-colonial or nationalist uh, occurred between uh, post-World War I and uh, uh, up until the 1960s with a focus on national self-determination. And then left-wing terrorism uh, wave occurred between the 1960s and the 1980s with an emphasis on Marxism. And the Fourth, the religious, 1979 to our current time, focused on Middle East conflicts. And then Rappaport said we're due for a new one. Now, what would that be? Others have theorized uh, ethnic utopias or technological lone wolves who are radicalized through the online environment. Others have focused on semi-states, for example, ISIS. Others have looked at far-right terrorism, and others have looked at um, multiple waves of para or paradigms. Um, in my own research, I tend to focus on multiple uh, terrorist waves occurring during the same periods. In terms of defining right-wing terrorism, uh, far-right refers to numerous political ideologies that um, focus around nationalism, racism, and anti-Semitism, and right-wing terrorism or terrorists use violence to address their political beliefs as well as their desired outcomes, and the white supremacist groups are considered to be one of the more dangerous groups. Rappaport believes that right-wing groups have been in each wave, especially the religious but he did not identify this group as a fifth wave. And Augur asks, is this a fifth wave? And seems to conclude, yes, and offers the explanations and support 
that there has been an expansion of right-wing terrorist activity over the past 15 years. There has been a triggering cause, which are populist political movements, immigration concerns, economic recessions, and elections. Also, is it international? Yes, we see right-wing terrorism has increased in North America and also in Western Europe and in Australia. Is there a common ideology? Yes, primarily the threat of replacement or a white genocide occurring. Then we would ask, is this part of a religious wave? And Augur points out that religious ideology is important in the past and still is for some groups, but um, in the case of the right-wing terrorist groups, seem to have decreased their focus on Christianity, although some will use Christian symbols for recruiting and propaganda purposes. And, of course, the fifth wave may overlap with the religious fourth wave. Augur also brings in the discussion, is there non-wave terrorism? Is right-wing terrorism outside of the waves? And we need to look at two uh, changes there. How violence is used, and for example, the past it was high frequency but low intensity, but now it is more mass casualty based, and also the new role of social media, that social media is used to unite groups and plan attacks. So is right-wing terrorism outside of the waves? We need to look at uh, that as well. Um, Augur does conclude that the data indicates we are in a fifth wave of right-wing terrorism, and we, of course, need to conduct much more research to, um, to see what the support is for this, as well as where the counter-arguments may be. If indeed the fifth wave is right-wing terrorism, it is very important, according to the author, that um, governments need to rethink their focus and practices. And so, in this brief um, um, overview of Augur's article, and of course, I would highly recommend, if you're interested, to um, go ahead and, and read it yourself on perspectives on terrorism. Um, what does this mean as far as how we study terrorism in the United States, what we should focus on, um, what criminal justice and law enforcement must look at, and where we go from here? Thank you.